Hello and welcome to Citizen Pew. This is Citizen Pew Commentary. Today I'm going to be talking about the Mossberg Shockwave and how I run mine. So this is my Mossberg Shockwave right here. I did pick up the uh, Flat Dark Earth version. And I'll tell you something. When I first picked it up, shooting some two and three quarter inch shells through it, uh, tried some buckshot, some slugs, and I, it is, don't get me wrong, those, those, those rounds are fun, but it'll throw you all over the place it will and you know i mean i consider myself a pretty stout person and i was like there is no way this is a practical firearm for home defense or anything like that so i set out to say all right how am i going to set this uh firearm up for any sort of practical home defense or self-defense um you know means so this is what i'm about to tell you <clears throat> i'll tell you what before i do that let me show you a little bit of footage of uh, the shockwave here doing what I wanted it to do. Woo! All right, so what you saw was the practical use of the uh, Mossberg shockwave, in my mind, using the modifications I made. So, I'm going to tell you, actually, the second thing I did was I put a Crimson Trace laser on it. And um, you can kind of see here, it covers up the whole top. You use the mounting plates on the top of the, uh, of the uh, shockwave to get it on. And then there's a plate that goes through the bolt hole. Uh, I shouldn't say the, the, the bolt hole that holds the trigger assembly on. And that holds your Crimson Trace laser on. Now, um, let's see here. Turn it on and you can see it against the wall. Look at that. You can see the dot pretty good. So, um, you know, that was the first thing I needed to do. Because honestly, shooting it from, from eye level and stuff like that uh, wasn't working with two and three quarter inch shells. Uh, I ended up shooting more from the hip and all that stuff. And I said, you know what? I don't want to shoot from the hip. I want to have some aiming capabilities with it. And I was sitting there thinking, well, I have the... Charles Daly Honcho, which is a similar firearm, but it's a 410. And I was sitting there thinking, well, the 410 shells don't have as much kick as the two and three quarter inch 12 gauge shells, but they do make mini shells. And that's where I found this little guy here, this mini clip. So this is the uh, Opsol mini clip, allows use of 12 gauge 1.75 inch birdshot, buckshot, and slug shells. And yeah, 12 gauge 2.0 flex is what it is. And you can get these for uh, 15 to 20 dollars, depending on where you pick it up. And it goes right here. You can see it right there, and that allows you to cycle in um, the one and three quarter inch uh, mini shells, and then that reduces the kick dramatically from a two and three quarter shell. And you can still get slugs um, or use birdshot or buckshot. And uh, I think for an indoor home defense firearm, that makes it way more manageable. So now we have a laser and uh, a round that's still going to allow me to get slugs and buckshot out, but isn't going to throw me all over the place so I can get more shots on target um, in a faster pace. And, you know, for anybody, like I said, who isn't a stout person, if you like an idea of, uh, of, of having a home defense firearm like this, like a Shockwave or a, uh, a uh, Charles Daly Honcho, then that may be something to consider. Now, I do believe this, this uh, mini clip package I picked up, it works for any 12 gauge Mossberg 500, 590, 590A1, and Maverick 88 models. So there you go. Um, and let me go ahead and show you some more footage of it. And then... Uh, I'll go into a little bit more explanation on some things. Get the laser back on. Now we got the mini slugs. So here we go. Safety might help. Woo! <laughs> here we go. Going to alternate. Uh, the bird shot with the slugs. Got the laser. 
Safety off. Safety off. All right, there you go. There's a little bit more footage. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to talk about the rounds I selected I used and uh, some rounds to watch out for because you might think they're mini slugs and I, I fell for this one myself and I picked them up and I'm like, ah, well, those aren't going to work in this. I also wanted to show you how I lined up my laser and, um, and kind of how I, I went about uh, getting it set up for the distance I wanted. So let me go ahead and set this down. I was shooting, in most of those videos uh, that you've seen so far, um, and what you'll see here at the end, uh, for the most part I'm shooting mini shells from, uh, these are Aguila, let me get them here, Aguila, um, one is the 7, I'm sorry, it's this one, 7.5 inch shot, 12 gauge, 1 and 3 quarter inch, and the other one is their lead slug, 12 gauge, 1 and 3 quarter inch, they do really well with this setup haven't had an issue with them and I did also have some of these federal um, these are 12 gauge one and three quarter inch these are eight shot and it, there you go eight shot so I had a couple boxes of these I did shoot some of these through it now one ammo to watch out for and it's not particularly this brand NSI but the NSI does make a mini buck and I was like, whoa, so many buck shells, I want them. And I bought them. Well, they're actually, I didn't even read the box. I was just so excited I found them. So I picked them up. And uh, later on I found they're actually two and a quarter inch. They're not, um, they're not one and three quarter inch. They're two and a quarter. So they were too long for this application. Would have been really awesome. But I have other applications I can use them in. So wasn't a total loss there. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was calibrating my laser. So what I did was, considering I was going to use this uh, Maverick Shockwave with, let me pull the box up, as a home defense, these little mini slugs, right, uh, I went and measured my house, right, or found the longest part that I would ever have to uh, pro possibly take care of a home invasion uh, invader, and that was about 30 feet. So what I did was, I set my laser up to be on point with the barrel, at 30 feet so what I did was I put this barrel laser in like this and well you can see it there it is Boop. I put the barrel laser in and I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how I did it so let me get the barrel laser in the chamber here um, so there you go the barrel lasers in and now if I turn on my laser you can see that there's two different dots on the wall. Let me get on there. There we go. You can see there's two different dots. That's because they cross paths at 30 feet. That's what I set it up as. 30 feet. And honestly, that deviation right there, that's at, at close range, not going to make a difference. But at 30 feet, I know that whatever's coming out of this barrel is heading towards whatever the Crimson Trace laser is pointing at. And anything closer, it's just going to be off by you know a hair until you get to really close and oh, I had my thumb in the way let's see if I got something really close uh, I do not um, <laughs> well really close they're they're off by I'll just tell you here get my thumb out of the way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. looks like about three quarters of an inch so at point blank range it's basically three quarters of an inch off which is about the distance from the laser here to the center of the barrel so there you go oh maybe I can do it this way there's the laser and you can see my finger in the way so look at that right but I chose 30 feet you might chose you might choose some other distance I chose 30 feet so let me get my laser turned off so I don't wear out my batteries here and I'll tell you what I mean if you own a lot of tactical shotguns, um, getting a laser like this, uh, a bore laser, um, can, will work too. But I just like the little shotgun shell size laser. Um, mine's just a little cheap generic brand, Laser Bore Cider. I think, I don't even know if it has a brand name. Yeah, so I don't know. Laser Bore Cider. That's what I picked up. I think I ordered it on that big old massive online ordering uh, company. But... Uh, it does really well so 
If you have tactical shotguns, you might want to use this to line up with uh, line line your tactical shotguns up with where your shots are going. If you have any type of sights or other lasers, um, you know if you're if you're a skeet trap shooter, I don't know. Maybe it will help. Maybe not. But that's what I used was a laser. So uh, that's about all I have. Uh, I got a few uh, a few more uh, segments of me shooting it that I'm going to show you before we go to the end credits and. Uh, yeah, you can tell me what you think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. You know, do you think that would be that? Do you think that this setup with the crimson trace laser and the uh, mini clip, the 2.0 flex mini clip, what do you think? You think it's effective as a home defense? I don't know. Uh, from the videos and from shooting it, yeah, I think it's going to do pretty good for uh, general uh, home defense uh, against most intruders. Now, if somebody's really, really got it out for me, um, you know, I might have to grab other options. But for, for general use, I really like it. The kick is really insignificant once you go to the uh, one and three quarter inch mini shells. So, I don't know. Oh, one other thing, too. When you're using one and three quarter inch mini shells, you can get eight into the mag tube and then one in the chamber so a total of nine shells versus when you're using two and three quarter you will have five four in the tube one in the chamber so anyhow that's all i got let me show you this other footage leave a comment in the comment section let me know what you think and thank you for watching this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel and here is that footage Come on, there you are. Right on the one, negative one. We'll go for negative three. All right, let me replace the target. We're gonna do some slugs. There it is. There you are. All right, let's see if I can get it on zero. Hold it there. Hey. Twist a little bit. Woo. We got a board there that's broke.